Well, good morning, everyone. How are you? I know you're thinking there must be a sound effect on in this thing. <laughs> Lord have mercy, who is this up here? Is Darth Vader at the gathering this morning? That's not funny. That hurts my one feeling. I only got one, all right? Be careful. It's an honor to be with you all this morning. I want to thank Paula for having me. Uh, when she called, I work for Dave Ramsey, so I travel the country speaking, uh, typically on money and leadership, but I also speak at churches on life. And, and so I, the opportunity to come spend time with you this morning, I, I welcomed it because Paula in the call, she said, Chris, I want you to know, you know, our, our church, we're real people. She goes, we're raw at times. And I said, well, okay, I think I can handle that. And when she mentioned it a couple more times, I started to get nervous. <laughs> and so I realized, all right, I might have to bring it, okay? But it, it's a pleasure to be with you all. Now, I want you to know, I, I, I am aware of the time limit. Okay, I was raised Southern Baptist, so we would go in at nine and not get out till two. Okay, I promise not to do that to you. Uh, I think you all would take me hostage if I took that long, so I won't do that. But I, I'm excited to talk with you today, and, and, and the, the title of my talk is The Question, The Road, and The Walk. Now, I know you all have people come in all the time that come in to preach to you and, and, and teach you some things, but I, I'm here today just to talk with you. Because I don't know about you, but I struggle with some stuff. Can I get an amen? amen. And I don't want people to be fake to me. I, I, a lot of times I like to just talk and be real. You all, are you the same? Yes. Just, just lay something out there and then give me something to think on. And then I, I'm going to walk through it and figure out where I'm at. And so today, that's what I want to do. I just want to talk with you a little bit and share with you some things. Now, uh, the, the last, the first morning session, I asked people to raise their hand, and I was like, I don't know why I did that. I can't see them anyway. <laughs> For like a deer down here. And, and you all know, I may leave out of here with more of a tan than when I came in. <laughs> and Lord knows I don't need one. So, but, but I, I would just appreciate you walking with me and, and, and having an open mind on some things. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but, but life happens, doesn't it? I, I, I watch TV these days, and I look at things, and I'm shocked by how things happen. And I used to be, when I was younger, I, I, I used to be a little bit more callous, I guess. I guess I could watch certain things, and it didn't affect me. But as I get older, and as life has happened more and more to me, I'm more sensitive now. There, there's some movies and some shows I can't watch because it sticks with me now. My heart hurts a little bit easier than it used to. Now, I used to play some football, and I'm still strong, okay, right in here, in this area right here only. Uh, my body can't do what it used to do. My mind thinks it can, but I can't. But I'm not as strong as I used to be, and I'm not as, as callous as I used to be either, which is a good thing. See, I think the more life happens to us, the more we become aware that we can't do this alone. We weren't designed to walk alone. And so I want to talk today, because I, I don't know about you, but I have questions. When life happens, do you all have questions? You see, you ain't going to be honest with me. Oh, you know you have questions. You ask why. Why, why did this happen, or why did that happen? And, 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 I, and I have questions. Now, I want you to be, to be very honest with you today. I, I'm going to raise some questions, but I don't necessarily have the answers. Okay, so those of you that had the pens and paper out, you can put it away. I'm not bringing you many, many answers, but I do have a couple, a couple of things to throw out that I think if you begin to think on it a little bit, you, you'll, you'll begin to see. For example, I ask why all the time, okay? And I have three boys. They're eight, six, and five. Yeah, pray for me. <laughs> pray for me. Three boys in the house, eight, six, and five. One of my whys is, why do my children wake up at 100 miles an hour? Don't they know that it's better to merge into the day? Like, like just start off slow and then go faster later. And I, I don't know if they got a supply of Red Bull in the room or what, but I'm gonna search, because they, they start off fast. My, my other why is, I don't know why my wife insists on me trying to put things together. I don't know. Because every time I try, I always have some extra parts left over. You all know what I'm talking about. I'm that guy trying to get the man in Sam's to sell me the floor model. Okay, and he's like, sir, we can't get that play area out of here. You're not going to have to, you're going to have to build your own. But I don't know why she does that. I don't know why she likes that. I, I, I don't know. 
another on a more personal level, a why of mine is, I don't know how or why I ended up in North Carolina holding my five-year-old son in the specialist office and he's spouting off medical statistics and these words that I don't quite understand and I'm not following him and I'm holding my boy and my wife's beside me and I wonder why am I in this doctor's office? Why is this man telling me things? Why is he talking about this as if it's some high level thing and this is my child? So when you ask questions and you have those why questions, I don't think we should stray away from those at all. But, but I think it's a matter of looking at it and understanding what is it that I'm asking? Because a lot of times I think we have to become refined. It means it's just like with going through fire. We become more polished as we walk through some things. And we've all had life experiences. We've all gone through some things. Some of us are going through it right now. I know I am. Now, I look, I look nice today because my wife dressed me, okay? Picked out this little vest and this shirt, okay? But, but I can tell you this, underneath this shirt and this vest, I have some scars. You have some scars? Been through some stuff, walking through it. Lord knows we don't know what we'll walk into when we leave away from here today because life happens. But in the midst of asking why, now again, I would ask that all the time. I'm an I'm a, I'm a intellectual type. I, I would do that. I would ask, why is this and why this? And with my son, Case, my, my youngest son, why is he having to deal with this as a five-year-old? And why am I having thoughts of laying hands on this doctor and not in a praying way? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, he's sitting there spouting off stuff and I'm, under, I'm thinking he doesn't understand who he's talking to. I'm from Kentucky. We handle things from Kentucky, just like in Tennessee. But he didn't understand. And again, a lot of people don't understand what you're walking through either. A lot of times they'll just glance and walk by. They don't understand how deep you hurt with some things. And I don't think they necessarily have to all the time. But I ask why. Why, why, why? I wore myself out those first two years with my youngest son's situation. How am I going to explain this to his older brothers? How, how am I supposed to process this? What am I supposed to do now? And then it dawned on me. Just like when you're driving in a car, the windshield is a whole lot bigger than the rearview mirror. Think about that. The windshield, it's bigger. You know why? Because we have to see what we're going to. We have to be able to see that the rearview mirror is tiny. Because we can look back, we have to be aware of what may be coming up on us and what we've been through, but the rearview mirror is small. I think when we ask why, a lot of times we're looking in the rearview mirror. Why did that happen? Because I know I asked the question, and I'm going to be honest with you. Why is my son having to battle this? Why is my family having to deal with this? And why is this happening to me? And I told you I was going to be transparent with you. Some of you are thinking those same questions. Why? I didn't have any quick answers. But one of the things that eventually dawned on me, two years, you all, and I'm summarizing, because I went through some stuff. I struggled. I had secret anger. I had secret frustration. And those things, when held inside, it will make you explode eventually. It'll wear you thin. It'll make your nerves be bad and it'll make you more edgy and irritable than you should be because you're holding it all inside. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But the question I figured out that the million dollar question is this, it's not the why, it's the what now. In light of this life happening to me, what now? What am I supposed to do now? I think when you ask that question, you're focusing forward on now, like right now, here today. And a lot of times when life happens, don't get me wrong, I'm not belittling it. I'm not saying you're not supposed to hurt because hurt hurts, heart hurt. I don't mean the topical, I don't mean the bee sting kind of hurt, which hurts bad enough. I got stung the other day and it reminded me, okay, that I'm bigger than the bee, but he's got a powerful punch, okay? And when he stung me in my finger, it alerted everything, okay? Think about it. First, my finger hurt, then it told my hand when it went to my arm, and then it hurry up and got to my feet that said, run, boy, run, okay, because he's got cousins, and you don't know where they're at, and I can't fight them all, and literally, seriously, I'm a grown man. I'm about six foot, 260 pounds. I was running from this bee, 
Okay, now don't tell nobody that. It's on film, ain't it? I'm a grown man. Can we edit that, please? And so the what now? So regardless of where you are right now, what I want you to do is think about what now? What can I do today? I sent out a tweet a while back and it caught on a lot. I asked, I told people, one step forward from where you are is called progress. See, we often hold ourselves to this standard that I have to hurry up and get way over here before I can call it progress. No, one step forward from where you are is progress. So if you can begin to take that one step, regardless of where you are, to me, you're making progress. And isn't it a blessing we don't have to end up like we started? Oh, I'm gonna say that one more time. Y'all wasn't tracking with me. <laughs> don't make me go Southern Baptist and keep y'all in here three hours. I'm just playing, somebody got up to leave, sit down. Don't you leave away from here. But it isn't a blessing that we don't have to end up how we started. The opportunity to be able to make some changes. See, with that little situation with my son, that, that big deal, that was a heart hurt. I had two choices, lay down and quit or walk with my boy. Lay down and quit or walk with my child. Now, quitting wasn't an option because he's counting on me. And just like you in your life, quitting is not an option because someone's counting on you. Someone's counting on you to be there. And I'm not saying you have to be able to fix situations. That's the misnomer we tell ourselves, that I have to solve somebody's situation. Do you know that just walking with them and letting them know you care can be more than a solution? It can, it can begin to help that heart hurt where you just let them know, I don't have the answers, but I'm praying for you. I don't tell people I know what you're going through. I'm careful of that because everybody's different. But I can tell you this, Casey's situation has caused me to be a kinder, gentler, more caring person. Because you know why? I learned to appreciate. See, it's hard to be hateful when you're grateful. It is so hard to be hateful when you're grateful. See, my child was still with me. I, I knew other parents that had lost children and walked through some things. And I, I thought, you know what, Lord? I'm going to take one step at a time. Give me the energy for the one step. And to be a kinder, gentler. See, I don't have time to get stressed out by weather like some people do. You all know them. They see rain and they're like, oh, it's raining. I'm like, you, oh, I don't have time to complain. I've got somewhere to go. That's why they make raincoats. <laughs> See, you don't, you, when, you, when you've walked through some life, little stuff won't bother you anymore. They forgot the extra sugar in my latte. <laughs> so? <laughs> Think about it. Little things don't bother you anymore because you realize I only have so much emotional energy and I refuse to waste it on something silly. I'm not going to waste emotional energy on silly anymore. I don't. I'm not worried about it. If it's something silly and minor, I will overlook it or move forward, but I realize I've only got so much energy to get through the day. Now I know, number one, that's not my child. My three boys are not my children. They're the Lord's child. Those are the God's children. I'm just supposed to manage their life as best I can. Love on them and steer them and guide them, but they're not my children anyway. And if I'm trusting in him and I'm confident in him, then I'm going to follow and do what I can do. Another tweet I sent out that caught on, I told people, we're supposed to be, become what we were meant to be because someone's waiting on us. Someone's waiting on us to become what we were meant to be. So if you stay stuck where you are, that means no movement, then you're stuck. You're not moving forward. That doesn't mean that, that you can't hurt because I still have days where I hurt. I have days I allow myself to go there for a little while, but here's the thing. I don't let myself stay there like I used to. I used to stay there too long. Just stay there too long. I can't control what comes into my mind, but I can tell you this, I do control how long it stays there. And I begin to push things out, because see, I was pre-mourning my child. I was pre-mourning. He's here still, making progress, thank God. But whatever comes, do you hear me? Whatever comes, I'm not confused anymore. When you get unconfused like that, see, those are things you're sure about. When you can get to that level, then you can begin to look at what now? The opportunity to speak to you all today. 
to hopefully give you something to think about. I have spoken to many more people that are walking through some things in a different way than I would have five years ago. I told you my heart is softer. There's some movies I can't watch anymore. There's certain genres I don't wanna be bothered with because I know my heart hurts. You can see me at times and people say, well, if you cry, it's a sign of weakness. No, a crying is a sign of relief when your heart hurts. Now, you have to be able to end the walk of life. That's the question. So don't ask why too much. You're going to do it some, but hurry up and get from why to the what now. Because that keeps you focused on moving forward, taking that step. Now, the road, and if they would put up that picture, I scared me turning around, seeing me that big back there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Y'all should have told me. They could have shrunk me a little bit or something, make me svelte. You know, give me some more muscles. Uh, but look, this picture, when I ran into it, it spoke to me. You, you see the road, like it's been worn. That road has been there a while. The paint is chipped, and you can tell some life has happened on that road. And so then you look, and you see the dark clouds. See, that, that to me is where life will bring situations to you. I, I think in, in the world, we're, we're irked by issues, pressed by problems, and stressed out by situations. We got some life going on. But if you just look past that dark cloud just a little bit, do you see that sun? That's what we have to remind ourselves of, that I'm gonna walk through some things and I'm not guaranteed that everything's gonna be rosy, but I know who I'm walking with as I go through some things. I think if we revisit some past experiences, things that we've prayed about, see, we've forgotten what we were already been blessed in. We've forgotten. Just go back a few years. I want you to get a piece of paper and write down that one big thing 10 years ago or five years ago that you were praying about that you were brought through. We've already forgotten because we move on to the next big thing. And I caught myself in my prayer life, you all, being transparent. I sounded a little bit like I was ordering at Burger King <laughs> in my prayer life. Lord, I need two of these, four of those, so-and-so needs one, and they need a half order of that, and somebody else, and you, you start to think about it. And I want you to think about that in your prayer and get confidence in your prayer life. Pray out loud, speak out loud. But I realized that instead of requesting things, I needed to be grateful. I needed to be thankful for the things that he already did that I've forgotten about and moved on to the next big thing to now all of a sudden understanding and appreciating where I'm at. And I think that appreciate, the, the gratefulness, I speak to my boys about it all the time. They're like, Daddy, I said, boys, you need to be grateful. That's when someone's done something for you that they didn't have to do. And I tell people walking through life, you are not meant or designed to walk through anything alone. Men, did you hear me? We're not meant to walk through things alone. I'm telling you this because I did and lost two years of my life and probably got another ulcer, trying to fix things or make things go our way. We're not designed to walk alone. That's why you all have the people in this room, a community, to be able to help you walk through those tough times and celebrate with you in the good times. But we're not designed to walk alone. And men, we typically don't talk, do we? Our wives ask us how our day is, what do we say? Fine, good. And realistically, we've summed it up right there, haven't we, guys? We told them everything they need to know. <laughs> Pretty much, fine and good, we told them. I messed around one time and asked my wife how her day was. <laughs> Seriously, is she gonna breathe? Is she still talking? She, had, she went into description. I ask smarter questions now, though, you all. I got smart. Guys, I'll meet with you after. Uh, but listen, <laughs> we're not designed to do that. And I think women, they help. My wife has helped me become a better communicator, talking about my feelings. This stuff with Case, honey, how are you feeling? And I would say, fine, or I'm okay. She'd go, no, no, how are you feeling today? i say, honey, I'm not good. I'm not good. My heart hurts today. I don't like him being poked and prodded. I don't like the thought of him having another surgery. I hurt today. The release of that, saying it out loud, it allowed me to understand. See, when you get smart, now I've got a few degrees, 
But see, smart people know, Christians need to know and remind ourselves often, when you've identified the problem, hopefully, let's go to the good solution. Let's begin to immediately do something that's going to help us. Your father's there waiting on you to talk to him. My youngest son, my oldest boy, actually, Tyson, he was eight and now, and a few years ago, he was working on a 10-year-old puzzle, and he was struggling with this puzzle, and I'm sitting right there with him, and all he had to do was ask me, and I, I, he said, Daddy, I've got it. I said, okay, and he was struggling with these pieces. The puzzle pieces were small, and he was struggling and struggling, and I said, Tyson, do you need some help? He goes, no, Daddy, I'll get it, and he got to the point where he was frustrated about 10 minutes in, and he said, I just give up. I'm done. And he got angry. And I went over to him and I said, son, I can help you with this. I can help you. And I said, you just have to turn this piece this way and turn it that way. And I showed him and I moved back and let him do it. Do you not know the reality of that struck me? That as I wrestle with stuff on my own, trying to make things fit that don't fit, when I'm doing this, all I've got to do, my father's right there. He's willing able and capable of helping me get through some things if I'll just ask him instead of trying to muscle through on some situations. And so for us, it's a reminder. We have to say, you know what? I don't know what I'm going to do in this situation. I have no idea, but what's the next step? I hope your first step is to get prayerful on it, just to be able to speak it. So it'll give you some, some, some thought. Now, I want you to also find somebody to talk to. Now, guys, I know that's a rough one right there, okay, because I'm talking about communicating and feelings in two, okay, and y'all just closed off on me right there. You're like, oh, he's lost his mind. (laughs) Little man thinks he's Dr. Phil or something. No, I'm serious. (laughs) Communicating. Now, some people want to know your business just because they're nosy. You all know some nosy people? Mm Mm-hmm. See, they just want to know what's going on with you so they can go tell someone else. They don't have a genuine interest in if you're really doing okay. They don't really, they don't really, they just want to know the information for the information's sake. And I tell people, listen, a lot of times you got to take a look at your inner circle. You may have to make some changes to the lineup. Some people, it's just like the velvet rope. You may need to escort some people out and let some positive people in. Listen, everyone smiling in your face ain't on your side. Everyone smiling in your face may not be on your side. So you need to figure out who's really on my team, who's really cheering on me to do well, or who really wants me to get through this situation, and they're truly praying for me. Those are the people you want to communicate with. Just be honest. Now, the level that of detail you give them, it's up to you. I'm not saying you have to go deep, but if you've got somebody, depending on where you are, I just don't want you to feel like you're doing it alone because I wasted a couple of years where I could have been enjoying my son just a little bit more if I wasn't wrapped up in that. I didn't know. And so I thank God I had some good friends that really just came and they stayed on me, okay, to communicate, or they would just go be near. You know, you got some friends, you don't have to talk a lot to, just being around them helps you feel better. And so to have those supportive people in your life, because the walk in life is not easy, It's not supposed to be easy. We weren't guaranteed easy. Now, when I talk about communicating and and opening up, ladies, you all do a good job of communicating. Sometimes too much, (laughs) okay? I said sometimes, but the communicating is not bad. Guys, for you and the people dealing with hurt, see, we'll, we'll topically talk about stuff all the time, TV shows, music, that's topical stuff. I'm talking heart stuff. See, that's the stuff we get a little bit more guarded on. And people will say, well, I'm, I don't know if I'm necessarily comfortable talking about that. Let me share something with you on the word comfortable. My pastor hit me in the chest with this a few years ago, and I never looked at the word the same. So I hope to do the same to you. Isn't that kind of me, just to come here to hit you in your chest with something? That's the love. And I'm huggable. I'm sweet and kind. But the word comfortable, see, when you think about comfortable, for me, I immediately go to my couch. I'm thinking I'm on, I'm on the couch, I've got my children, I've got my wife, we're watching a show or relaxing, playing a game, that to me is comfortable. Or a little bit deeper, maybe I'm out on the beach with the wind blowing through my hair, okay? <laughs> now see, you went there, you all went there. I said I was gonna be real, so the wind blowing through my scalp, how's that? 
okay? But that to me equals comfortable in my mind. What's comfortable for you? What would you, what would you put as your comfort place or something you would enjoy? And then he hit us with this. And it was literally like the movie The Matrix with all these times I'd used the word comfortable coming into my mind. Our pastor asked us this, was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, comfortable on that cross? Mm-hmm. Told you it hit you in your chest. Was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, comfortable on that cross? Being spit on, beaten, ridiculed when he knew who he was. Was that comfortable? I've never quite looked at the word quite the same. Now I catch myself when people ask me, hey, Chris, will you go do this or do that? And I go, yeah, you know, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable. No, I didn't. (laughs) Yep, I'll do it. I immediately just cut it off. To be transparent with you, this was one of these examples. As Paula called, I go, yeah, I don't know if I'm, com- ooh, sure, Paula. <laughs> I did, seriously, I just cut it off. I'm like, yep. And I got off the phone, and I'm like, am I seriously going to go do that? <laughs> seriously? Ooh. I don't think we're called to be comfortable. I think we're called to be effective. Comfort doesn't come into the equation. Leave comfort for the beach, but effective in each other's lives. And that's not solving. That's not fixing anything. You don't have to fix to be concerned. A lot of times, guys, I know we struggle with that because we want to fix stuff. My wife tells me she's thirsty. I'm on my way to get some water. She tells me her feelings are hurt. I'm on my way to sit on the couch because I don't know what to do with that. (laughs) Okay? (laughs) I'm just sitting. I'm like, yes, baby, I don't know. I don't (laughs) How many feelings you got? She's got a whole lot. I, I, I'm still finding new ones. I don't, I, I got like, man, we got four emotions, don't we? Think about it. Happy, sad, mad, and about to be mad. That pretty much sums us up right there. So <laughs> ladies, if you didn't know, write that down. I just told you. We got four. Women have more. They give us more and they make us grow. They help us grow. But, but in looking at that, to be able to not seek comfort, but seek to be effective, What would be effective? If your heart hurts, find somebody to talk about it with. You're not supposed to walk on this road alone. You weren't designed for that. There are people in here that can pray for you. I mean the people that truly care about you. That kind of prayer. Find them and open up about your situation. You know, now, if someone comes to you and tells you about a heart hurt, you don't violate their trust and their confidence by going to talk to other people. That would be a violation. We don't want to do that. See, if they want other people to know, they'll let them know. Okay, otherwise, what you need to do is figure out and don't try to solve. You just say, I don't know, but I'll pray for you. I don't know. I really don't. And I I will be praying for you. And that's what I do a lot now because people are going through some situations, you all. Life is happening. But as you walk on that road, I want you to think, who am I walking with? Who am, who am I holding on to the hand of as I go through whatever comes? Whatever comes. See, there, there are things that we need to absolutely know. And there are some things that we can't know the answers to this side of heaven. There are some things we're not going to know. And I think we burn and churn a lot of energy trying to figure out answers when we don't know. And have you noticed people can have some opinions? Oh, my goodness. People have opinions changing on the minute. We don't, Again, there are things we're not designed to know yet. So then when you don't know, you're supposed to shift focus on what you do know. The Lord and Savior died on the cross for my life, for my sins. I've been blessed to have a family. I've been blessed to have children. I've been blessed. People ask me how I'm doing. I'm honest with them. I tell them I'm a mess, but I'm blessed. Oh, I got issues but I'm blessed in it, and I know what I'm walking to. And thank goodness I don't have to end where I started. My grandmother battled colon cancer back in, she passed in 95, and I remember her telling me like in the early 90s when I was in school, she goes, she goes Christopher, you've done me proud. I don't, didn't understand how much of a blessing that was to hear her say that, but now as I reflect back on it, for her to tell me I've done her proud, that meant in trying some things, that I wasn't worried about failing, And I tell you this, a setback is a setup for a comeback. You might have walked through something, but a setback is just a setup for a comeback. 
You just have to keep moving. Keep moving. Delete the unnecessary. Get people in your corner that belong there. Get people in there that are going to support you and love on you. Because we've all got things looking in the rearview mirror we wish we could go back and fix. Have y'all ever said some stuff you wish you could go back and fix? You ever done some things you wish you could go back and fix? Or didn't do some things that you wish you could go back and fix? See, that's, in that, that's back there. If it won't help you go forward, quit grabbing onto them old hurts. Old hurts won't help you get to where you need to go. It's just like on an airplane. Some baggage needs to be checked. Some of it needs to be released. It's a two-bag carry-on rule. What, what are you grabbing? <laughs> Hopefully, you're grabbing hope and faith. Those are the two bags that need to go with you. We were, I was flying back from Louisiana yesterday, and we hit some turbulence, and you should have saw people on the plane. There were some, some people hollered, and they yelled, I'm just sitting, because I realized I know when you fly, you may hit some turbulence. I know when you're up there in the air doing some things, you're going to have some storms. That storm yesterday came out of nowhere. I thought, how appropriate, because the storms of life can come out of nowhere. But I knew that when you fly, you will hit some turbulence. I was not stressed. I just sat there doing what I was doing. And eventually it, what, leveled off, and we continued doing what we needed to do. The storms in life will bring some turbulence. And a lot of times it may knock you down knock you flat on your back like Case's situation did to me. But I got up one step at a time on one knee and stood up because that boy's counting on me. And you've got people counting on you to make progress. And that's what I want you to do. So if you got some stuff you're holding on to or dragging back from the past, release it today. It doesn't mean I don't have issues. I just left mine out in the car, okay? They're waiting on me as soon as I go back out there. But there's some hurt, there's some things I'm not going to keep dragging forward because our emotions can be, can be very authentic. It just doesn't necessarily make them right. So we have to be clear about where we're going and what we're going to. So please keep walking. Just know who you're walking with. Arm yourself with information that's going to encourage you to keep walking and don't give up. Please don't quit. And please don't go through things alone because that's where I think the struggle happens. Because see, if you're left to your own devices, you're limited by that. You may not have hope that day, but if you're talking to somebody or you have a good friend that's genuinely concerned about your life, they can help you remember that you have a Lord that can, that you've been through some things before and that you'll get through this. And it might take some time. I'm not saying that, but we're a microwave society. We want things done yesterday. So we just have to slow down, have realistic expectations, and keep holding on to hope. So just walk your walk and walk it with your head up because down here, it hurts down here. Sometimes you got to look at something bigger than you. Paula, I thank you again for having me. Uh, I appreciate you, uh, and I'm praying for you, for what you all are doing, and I'm praying for you all as well as a church. Uh, I know you're doing good things and big things. And I think that in the light of the situations that you walk through, you got to think about who am I trying to do proud? Who do I want to do proud? And that means you take the, the, the mission of things and you make sure they move forward. And you move forward a little bit different. See, I'm not the same daddy I used to be five years ago when I took things for granted. Because I know time is of the essence right now. His disease, the rarest form, it can kill him by the age 12 to 15 years old. That's the reality of his situation. And a lot of times I was pre-morning and I was fasting forward to that time and already not realizing the gift that I have now. So some of us were worrying about things that we don't even need to focus on. One step, one day at a time. Will you all pray with me? Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity to be here with the gathering. I pray that you, you just bless the families that are represented here. I thank you for the blessings that you've given to each of us. I apologize, and we apologize for the times that we've been ungrateful, and we thank you for you. We thank you for the gift of walking with us and giving us courage, strength, and ability to try harder, think bigger, and do better than we've ever done before. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to end up how we started, that each day you extend us grace, love, and mercy that we could never earn and probably don't even deserve, but you give it to us anyway. Give us the power to go out this week and not to have heavy hearts, but to have a grateful heart. 
because we know that if you guard are with us, really who can ever be against us? Help us, Lord, to keep our heads up, eyes open, and our hands ready, ready to serve, help, and encourage others how we can, the absolute best we can. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you all.